How are we doing? Hey, hey, fine. <laughs> How are you hey, feeling? Ah, ちょっと緊張してますね。あ、すごいすごいカメラ。カメラみんな撮ってる。A little bit nervous right now. I see a lot of cameras pointed at me. <laughs> well, that is a lot of cameras. All right. <laughs> well, first, I just wanted to express how much I loved your film. I, I had such a joyous time in the theater watching it. Yuko was talking about people crying in the theater. I was crying twice. I, I cried twice. <laughs> I, I thought it was so beautiful. And, you know, I'm a visual effects artist. And with a lot of these VFX heavy films, I tend to zone out and I'm like, oh, that plate could be a little blurrier or you know, that animation could be a little bit faster. But with this film, I was just so engrossed in the story and、um, just swept up in the world that you created. And so I'm not surprised that the film has garnered so much success in the past few months. Thank you.、Um, how has this journey been for you? What, what a wild ride. It, it,、um, has any of the attention <laughs> been overwhelming? そうですね、2か月ぐらい前までこんな状況になるっていうのは全く想像してなかったものですから、そこで言ってください。まだちょっと混乱の中にいますね、あの混乱のすごく嬉しい混乱の嵐の中にいます。そうですね、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、今夢だよって言われてもそんなにびっくりしないだよねっていう感じですね今。So if you told me this is a dream right now, I just say yeah, I thought so. <笑> I can pitch you if you want. ありがとうございます。Um, I also heard a rumor that Steven Spielberg saw your movie three, not one, not two, but three times, which is insane. That, how did that feel? What an honor from such an acclaimed director. <笑>あのこの前そのオスカーのランチョンというあの会がありまして、まあ、お昼ご飯食べながらいろんな人たちがそのいるパーティーみたいな会だったんですけど、まあ、ちょうど一緒にマイキーが行っててであそこにスピルバーグいるよって言われたんだけどいやいやいるわけないでしょと思って違う違う違うマイキー,マイキー違うからスピルバーグいるわけないよって言ってたんだけどいや絶対スピルバーグです行ってみましょうって言って見に行ったら本当にスティーブン・スピルバーグだったんですよ。でびっくりしてであの、まあなんか違う人と話してたんですけどあのもうそこで後ろでこうずっと話したいんですけどオーラ出しながらずっとこうやってたらあの気づいてくれてであのも持ってたんですねこ,こいつを<笑>そしたらあの「おおゴジラの監督か」ってすごい認識してくれて「ああゴジラの監督ってあの3回見たよ」って1回は自分家であのスクリーニングで見て。その後あのあすごい良かったので IMAX に行ってでかいスクリーンで見てその後ドルビードルビーでもう一回見たんだって,っていやその言い方からすると本当に3回見たらしいということがすごいリアリティがあってですね、あのーまあ、僕にとってはあの神様の一人なんでちょっとそこもちょっと頭混乱しましたねな、えー、と今目の前にスピルバーグいて俺の映画3回見たって言ってなんか褒めてくれてるっていう状況はちょっと到底現実のものとは思えなくて。どうしようって思いながらもうなんかわーってなりながらそのままあのうちのスタッフもちょうどいたんであのスタッフも紹介してそしたらあのすごい若い子で水のエフェクトを作った若い子がいるんですけどあの彼が水を作ったんですって言ったらスピルバックが「あの水すごい良かったんだよ」って言ってまあ彼は一緒に写真撮ってたんですけど多分あの野島君って言うんですけど野島君の人生のピークがその時に訪れてしまったんじゃないかな<笑>これから大丈夫かなっていう思うぐらいあの本当にすごい興奮するひと時でした素晴らしかったです本当にありがとうオスカーって感じですねあんな機会をあ,、まあ、ありがとうゴジラですねゴジラゴジラが見せてくれた風景の一つだと思いますけどごめん長かったねすごく<笑>長かったです、ね、ちょっと興奮して長かった話して<笑> So,、uh, last week we had the opportunity of going to the Oscar luncheon, which is where all the nominees gather and we take a class photo of that year's Oscar nominees. And incidentally, I had spotted Steven Spielberg a few tables away from us and I said, Hey, how was that sound? It's Spielberg. He said, No way, Mikey, you must be crazy. Spielberg wouldn't come to this. But sure enough, it was. So, we walk up to him. And he, Steven Spielberg was talking to someone else, but Yamazaki san was giving him the eye the whole time, just waiting, waiting for his moment to pounce. And sure enough, because I was carrying Godzilla with me, Steven Spielberg said, Oh, you're the director of Godzilla. I saw it three times. And I couldn't believe it because Spielberg is like a 
God to me, just what he's done for the film industry. But it sounded very real because Spielberg goes on about saying, well, I saw it once in my home, and then I had to go see it again in IMAX, and then Dolby Atmos. So it's like, you can't make that up. So I felt pretty confident he, uh, he actually did see it three times. Um, and in our conversation, some of my other team members were really close by with us. So uh, the youngest one who did a lot of the water simulation, his name is Nojima, uh, Spielberg said, you did the water? Oh, you have a bright future. So that's when I think Nojima is still really young, I think like 25 years old. Um, perhaps that's when his life has peaked. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I want to uh, I want to thank, of course, the Oscars and the Academy, and of course, Godzilla, who opened the door for us. Wow, that's some high praise. Um, did you take any inspiration from Mr. Spielberg's work? Like uh, maybe a little Jaws in there or anything? あ、もうすごいたくさんありますね。あの、やっぱりまあ、ジョーズの影響は認めざるを得ませんし、あと、まあ、宇宙戦争、僕は宇宙戦争すごく好きなんで、あの、宇宙戦争の敵は昼間に
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think it's about time. We have a very fun video to show you guys. It's a bit of a behind the scenes look mm -hmm. into the VFX process of Godzilla Minus One. So let's uh, roll the clip.私たちはゴジラ しかし今回は監督がVFXスーパーバイザーも兼任していたため、途中のチェックを飛ばしてアーティストを直接対話することができました。純拓ではない予算はセットの制作にも影響しました。例えばこの作品にはたくさんの部軍艦が出てきますが、それらすべてのセットを作るのは不可能でした。我々が用意できたのは一つの船べりだけ。そこで私たちはそれをデジタル技
それと雰囲気を揃えるためには大掛かりなシミュレーションが必要になります数秒のカットのためにお寺ほどのデータを使ったショットもあるほどこのデータ量は膨大なものになりました様々な工夫を凝らすことでこちらマイナスワンの VFX は作り上げています古典的な手法がデジタルと組み合わさることで可能性を広げることそこには手作りの温かさが自然と備わっていたのではないかと感じていますご視聴ありがとうございました There were so many incredible techniques and ideas shown in there. So, so much ingenuity shown. It, like the, um, the trick of moving the camera to make it look like the actual object itself is moving is, is genius.、Um, out of all of the you know, different aspects of the visual effects that you guys used in the film, what do you think, led,、um, what do you think was the most no noteworthy aspect that led to the nomination you guys received? うん、そうですね。お金がないのに頑張ったことじゃないかなと思うんですけど。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうちょっと懐かしかったんじゃないかなってちょっと思ってます。And if you look at a lot of the Academy members, perhaps I think they've seen special effects transition into VFX, and they may have felt some nostalgia remembering what Godzilla used to be and seeing what's doing now. <laughs> interesting, interesting. あいつらまだやってるよって思って、票入れてくれたんじゃないかなと思うんだけど。Look at these guys, they're still using such classic techniques. I'll give them a, a vote, a pity vote. <laughs> I think it's a bit more than that. But、um, yeah, wow. I mean, it's crazy you guys were able to pull that off on such a limited budget. What were some of the challenges, or maybe the biggest challenge, of making such a grand scale film on such a limited budget? Well, in Japan, it's usually just a little bit of a budget. It's usually just a little bit of a budget. It's usually just a little bit of a budget. It's usually just やっぱちょっと無茶だっていつも言われますね。やろうとしていることとあの最終的に出来上がるものあのちょっとその予算でできるかどうかちょっとわからないっていうふうに言われる中でずっと作ってきたんで、まあ、だいぶ節約の方法とかいろいろあの学んでると思うんですけど、一番大きいのはさっきビデオでも出てましたけど、僕ずっと現あの VFX の現場にいるんでチェックが早いんです。だからもうちょっと間違った方向行ったらそっちじゃないそっちじゃないってすぐ言えるし、あとビジョンが監督兼 VFX なんであの僕の思ったものがそこにあればそれで OK なんであの VFX スーパーバイザーが一生懸命作って何ヶ月もかけて作った映像を監督見てたらちょっとそれじゃないんだよねって言われるってことはまずないってそういうなんかいろんなことがあの非常に効率的には進んでるんじゃないかなっていうふうに思いますね。Uh, well, actually, for a Japanese film, it was not just above average, it was on the higher end of the budgets,、uh, so we were very fortunate. But I think a lot of the shots that I wanted to do and that I envisioned when I would tell people about it, they'd say, Ooh, I don't know if we can do this on this budget. So, what we attempted and what we ultimately got, I think it, we were able to close the distance between that. And、uh, for example,、uh, it was in the video as well, but I was on site. 
where all of our VFX artists were working. So I could go right up to their desk and tell them, uh, you know, this shot's good, I like this, change that. Or if I could tell they were about to go down a wrong path that I wasn't imagining, I could pull them back right away and say, hey, try in this direction. So I imagine a lot of other Hollywood productions, uh, the director is not always available and the VFX supervisor probably goes in one direction then after spending weeks or months on a shot, they'll uh, show it to the director and they're like, oh no, this isn't exactly what I wanted, so change everything. So I think there's a lot of perhaps inefficiencies that happen during that pipeline, but because I was the director and the VFX supervisor, I had a very strong image of what I was looking for and I knew what was capable so I could make sure all the artists were applying their time to tasks uh, that would get us closer to that final image I had. Yeah, I think with a lot of big budget studio movies, there's a big disconnect between the director and the VFX supervisor and the VFX team. But the fact that you know exactly what goes into all of that much have just, must have just opened up so many more possibilities for what you could do. Um, but you weren't just the director and the VFX supervisor, you were also the script writer. You, three insane, <laughs> insanely um, time consuming jobs. How did you juggle all that? <笑>あのでも脚本家の時期と監督の時期とブルックスーパーバイザーの時期っていうのは完全にこう仕事をする時期は分かれてるんで、まあ、ジョブチェンジしてるだけですねだからそんなになんかあの大変っていうことはないんですけど一番の問題はあの監督してる時は脚本の問題点をすごい分かるんです監督になった時はだから誰が書いたんだよこの脚本って思うと。<笑>まあ、自分ですよねで,で VFX を始めると監督がいい加減に撮ったシーンにすごい苦労させられたりするわけですよ。で誰だこれ撮ったやつはって、まあ、あの自分っていうあの誰にも当たれないっていうのは非常に大変な問題だと思います。Well, I don't know if I necessarily say juggling. It was more uh, when you're making a film, you go in different stages. So I was the writer first, then the director, then the VFX supervisor. So they were all separate roles. And I was, in a sense, job changing. So there was never a point where I had to do all three jobs at once. With that being said, when I was directing on the set, I would occasionally think to you know, the writer, man, who wrote this scene? Why would you <laughs> write this in? And then when I'm in post-production doing VFX, I'll, uh, I want to just strangle the director who said, oh, we could fix it in post. Like, who said that? <laughs> but all arrows point back to me in that case. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, nobody else to blame. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the video, we learned a bit about um, how you guys streamlined the visual effects process, um, kind of took out some of the inefficiencies in the pipeline. Could you talk a bit more about those uh, processes and things you came up with? はいはいはい、そうですね、あのー、さらに言うとパイプライン、まああのー、普通、かなり対策だとパイプラインを使ってこれをやる人、これをやる人、これをやる人って感じなんだけど、えっと、うちの会社は大体一人でワンカット仕上げるんです、だから、えー、アニメーション、モデリングもやって、アニメーションもやって、ライティングして、最終的な絵を作るみたいなことを、一人ないし、二人ぐらいで担当することが多くて。あのそれはなんかすごいだ誰かの仕事を待ってたり誰かのせいにできないんであの非常にそこも効率的かなというふうに思いますねだからパイプラインではないやり方ですあの作り方としてはただその場合非常にそのカットごとがバラバラにクオリティとかいろんなことがバラバラになりやすいんですけどなんかあんまり良くないカットができたらちょっと違う人がそこ手伝ったりとかあとあのまあ僕長くずっと同じチームで長くやってるんで。大体僕がどのくらいのことを要求するかとかどんな絵が好きかってことはもう,もう本当に通過で分かってるんで多分上がってくるものはああいいじゃんっていう感じになるんですね大体のカットがだからちょっとあのもしかしたら我々のチームでしかできない方法かもしれないけど一人でワンカットを最後まで仕上げるっていうやり方があのその効率につながってるんじゃないかなっていうふうに思ってます。Uh, it's often the term you mentioned, pipeline, is used in VFX because there are so many different disciplines and so many stages any shot has to go through. Uh, in our case, we actually broke up that model and then had single artists almost see a shot from start to finish. So 
beginning with the modeling of any assets we'll need, then animating it, and then lighting it, and then compositing it, creating the final scene that you see on screen, either one, maybe two artists will oversee that whole pipeline with just the two of them straddling different disciplines. So there's not a lot of downtime when we do that because you're not waiting for so-and-so department to send a shot back or waiting for animators to finish animating before you could start lighting, et cetera. Everything is happening uh, simultaneously because we've assigned artists to that. And we've been working together for a long time, the team and I, and I think that definitely has a lot of sort of uh, shorthand communication, so to speak. The team knows kind of what I like to see and they have a really good idea. So even if you might be wondering, okay, if you assign single artists or teams to entire shots, isn't the quality gonna be all over the place? I think because they know what I like, we're able to control that a lot more. And in the event something isn't quite up to par, we'll just assign another artist as support so we can polish the shot and bring it to the bar, the level that we're, we're aiming for. So perhaps maybe only our team was uh, capable of making this film the way we did on the budget that we did. もともとコンポジター合成をする人として会社に入ったんです。で、あの、ものすごく効率的になりました。なんか割とそういう人が多いですね、うちの会社というかうちのチームには。あの、最初に出てくるヤングゴジラもあの、やっぱりコンポジターとして入ったやつが、あの、趣味でブレンダーでアニメ
そうですねでもやっぱりやっぱりもっと使いたいいろんなショットを作りたいって時はちょっと足りないんでもうちょっと増やしていかなきゃいけないなと思うしあのー、これからその白組がどう変わっていくかっていうのが一つ大きな課題なんですけどただまあやっぱりあの非常に狭い範囲であの作れるからチェックは楽だし早いしあとお互いがお互いのカットを見ながらああだこうだっていう機会がすごく多いんですね。だから普通は VFX のスタジオって多分あの会議を開いて試写をしながらみんなで見てみたいなやつがあると思うんですけどあんまりそういうのなくてその場その場で誰かが何か問題点を見つけたりしたらこうこうやった方がいいんじゃないのみたいなお互いのこういう交流がすごく多い,多いですねあとあの今回からフロアを一つにしたんです全員が一つのフロアに入れるようにあのワンフロアにしたんですねだから僕も椅子でどこまででも行けるしあの<笑><笑>あのすぐすぐ椅子に座ったまま行って後ろから見れるんで、あのー、非常に<笑>効率的になったと思いますワンフロアに全員がいるっていうのはすごい、まあ、人数少ないとできないことですからそれはすごく良かったなというふうに思ってますね。Uh, of course, there are certain instances where I wish we could have taken on more VFX shots, or I had a different vision, but I knew we weren't going to be able to achieve it just from the sheer volume of shots we'd have to get through. So, having a bigger team, I could certainly see its、uh, advantages, and I'm not sure what direction Shiragumi, our production company, is headed in the future. But、uh, the benefits, I think, are the smaller team definitely allows for more oversight on, on my part. And that goes not just for me, but a lot of the other artists as well, because everyone can kind of see each other's screens. If you could tell, hey, this isn't going in the good direction, or there's this checks and balances that are kind of happening on the floor itself. And in the Hollywood scenario, I imagine there's probably a whole screening session where you have. Completed or in progress shots, you gather everyone into a screening room, you sit down, you take notes, and the notes go back. So I think there's definitely just looking over people's shoulders and seeing what they're working on,、uh, there's an advantage to that. And like the video said as well, because we had everyone on one single floor and my chair had casters on it, I can just <laughs> roll anywhere and up to anyone's desk and say, hey, you know, what are you working on? What, what do you need me to check something, et cetera? So that's something I think can only be done with the size of team that we had. I imagine some artists heard a swiveling chair coming towards them. They were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, speaking of oversight,、um, you mentioned that while you were working on the script, you thought about how many artists would be needed for each shot.、Um, could you tell us a little bit more about that process? Ah, it's a little bit of 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 a 号令をかけると集まるメンバー28人ぐらいだと思うんですけどあの35人だいぶ贅沢しました今回は。ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、あ Given the success of the film, I and I'm sure all of us are wondering、um, if there are any plans moving forward, what the next project might be, if there's anything you can tell us. It, I know it's probably、uh, NDAs on NDAs, but、uh, if you can give us anything. You already know the answer to that. <laughs> Do I? I mean, yeah, but there are many projects that are happening, so I'm going to be happy to see you. ずいぶんゴジラのおかげで仕事がしやすくなったと思います、今まで以上に。あの本当に北米の方たちが認めてくれたってことはすごく大きくて、あの今までなかなか企画が通らなかったようなものも、多分すごく取りやすくなると思うんで、あのまたすごいやつ作って持っていきたいなと思ってますけれど。Uh, and we're developing many projects, of course, and you always have something in various stages of development. But Godzilla really paved the way and made my job a lot easier. And getting recognition from Hollywood and the Academy, too, of course. I hope that's going to make green lighting projects a lot easier in the future. But I definitely intend to keep making amazing films and bringing it wherever I can. So please stay tuned. Wow. Well, I imagine I speak for everyone when I say that we can't wait for. Whatever's next. Because, you know, the film is amazing, and hearing about the behind the scenes has been so inspirational, and I'm sure it's 
inspirational for you know young people around the world and for people in Japan. Do you have any advice for young filmmakers or people who are looking to get into visual effects? でも本当好奇心を持ち続けてほしいなと思いますね。あのやっぱり新しいもの好きであることってすごく大事な気がしてて、あのいろんな技術が出てくる。でそれをこうは俺はこれやんないっていうふうに拒否しちゃうんじ
あの反戦の気持ちとかそういうのがちょっと高まってる時期なんじゃないかなっていうふうに思,い思ってます今は。Post war Japan, and seeing as we were going into post production how the sense of war became more imminent, it was definitely a very bizarre feeling because the more we worked on the film, it seemed the closer the world was headed in that direction. Uh, so, in this weird twist of fate, perhaps. And if you look at a lot of the films in the Japanese box office right now, a lot of them are set in post war Japan. So, perhaps a lot of filmmakers and creators are. Also, sensing this geopolitical movement and applying that into their creative works.、Hmm. Um, this gentleman right down here, maybe? Hello.、Uh, you said you were a writer, a director, and a VFX artist. Which role did you actually start off first? And from that role, how did you transition to the other roles? And which one do you like the most? うん、僕は最初は会社には、えー、VFX の VFX のミニチュアを作る人間として入りました会社にはだけどあの会社入ったらあんまり VFX のスーパーバイザーがあのその僕が入ったスタジオにはいなかったんであの社長が「山崎全部仕切れ」って言われてまだ二十歳そこそこだったんですけどうちのうちの社長ちょっとクレイジーだったんで「あのお前が」お前が少しきれいって言われてすぐスーパーバイザーになったんですねで、えー、ともうまあ子供からの頃からの夢だったんでその仕事できてすごく嬉しかったんですけどいろんな、まあ、例えばあの伊丹十三監督の映画とかやってすごいうわ映画,と映画やってるよと思ってすごい嬉しかったんですけどある日気が付いたら僕が関わる映画怪獣出てこないし宇宙船出てこないしロボット出てこないしと思ってあれ俺これそういうの作りたかったんだっけと思ってこれどうにかしなきゃなって思って監督になることを決めたんですだから監督,にで監督になるためにどうすればいいのかな企画を立てるにはどうすればいいかなっていうふうに考えたらまあ,あの脚本を書くのが一番早道かなと思ってで脚本を書いてで監督になれたとそういう流れではありますねで一番楽しいのは、まあ、大体どこも楽しいですねあの脚本書いてる時は先々のこといろいろ想像して楽しいし監督中は監督中でやっぱりあのキャストと。いろいろコラボしするのも楽しいしあとその結構 VFX の最終的な仕上がりって現場でかなり決まってしまうんでどういう工夫をその現場に投入するかっていうことをみんなと考えるのすごい楽しいし VFX はもうやっぱ最初の観客になれますからね出来上がってきた映像のそれはまあすごく楽しいまあどのパートも全部楽,楽しいですねあのどどもう今,今や僕の中ではこの3つの仕事っていうよりは1つの塊の仕事なんで。あのどこを撮って楽しいっていうふうには言えないんですけどあの非常に映画監督という仕事ができて本当に嬉しいなというふうに思ってますね。Well, I first started off my career、uh, in VFX, and I was working on miniatures. It was my job to create miniatures for different VFX or special effects shots. And、uh, our company is rather weird. There was no VFX supervisor at the time. So the president said, Hey, Yamazaki, do VFX supervising. And I was only 20 something, which was crazy to think about. But when I became VFX supervisor, I felt like I was living the dream because I, I knew I wanted to do these types of、uh, shots. So I was really happy I got to work on. On、some of Juzo Itami's works.、Uh, but one day it dawned on me wait a second, I'm in charge of VFX, but none of the films we get have kaiju or spaceships or robots in it. So I got to do something about this, which is when I realized the only way to do that is becoming a director so I can make sure I have the elements or components I want in my films. And the quickest way that I discovered to directing is building your own project, which is Going to mean you have to write something. So I then started writing plots, and that all kind of fused together into one role. And 
all the roles are fun, I would say. Uh, when I'm writing, it's always fun to imagine what these worlds and characters are going to look like. When you're directing, you think about the cast and how you're collaborating as a team on set. And when you're in VFX or post-production, really that's where the film and the shots are completed. So you have the whole team in one location working together and the VFX team, in a sense, becomes the very first audience of the film, the very first judge of the film. So I like looking at the film from many different angles. So I don't necessarily see them as three different roles as much as I see it as one role with three different parts, so to speak, and it's just filmmaking altogether. All right, we have a fine gentleman down here. Uh, besides the first Godzilla film, uh, what are some of your other favorite Godzilla movies? Shin Gojira. Shin Godzilla? Shin Gojira was very beautiful, so I thought it was very difficult to do it next time. I was asked to comment about how Shin Gojira was. I was asked to comment on the other side of the film and to comment on the other side of the film. 本当次の監督は大変ですねって書いたら自分でした。<笑> I thought Shin Godzilla it was a really really amazing film and when Shin Godzilla came out and had the the reception at one time I was asked to make a comment or a quote so to speak for the back of some flyer or magazine I can't remember and I said man Shin Godzilla was so amazing I feel bad for whoever has to direct the next Godzilla film. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> All right, uh, fine gentleman down here. Um, one of the most amazing things about your amazing film is the music and the pacing. And I'd like to ask you how you worked with your composer, how early your composer came into the process and how you put music to scenes that were still being rendered and weren't fully completed and how you had that in your mind. あの、<笑> ま、佐藤さんの言うこと大体正しいんで、あの、じゃあ、ただ、もうすごい僕もあの、一番興奮するぐらい<笑> Uh, I always work with the same composer, uh, Sato, Sato-san, and we've worked together a really long time, and when this project came around, he was really, really into it, so I could tell he was very energized. So very early on, he had sent a bunch of temp and scratch tracks to me, and they all sounded really dark, but in the past, our working relationship, I've learned to trust him, and his judgment is usually correct, so of course, when we synced it with the footage, it looked really, really amazing. But I have to say one of the most amazing decisions he had made is uh, later in the film when they start the Watatsumi operation, I had asked for a different composition. I asked him to make something original for there, but he pushed back and said, no, director, I think we have to go with Ifukube's original Godzilla. And we synced it to the footage, and sure enough, it gave me goosebumps. It was so exciting seeing that that soundtrack come together with the footage we created. So I think that was one of the best decisions he made, and I don't account it to him trying to skip out on giving you one song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the score in the film is so amazing. Even during the little behind the scenes clip we got, I could hear like the hopeful theme playing, and it's so iconic. I think it's gonna be one of the iconic uh, themes of, of this generation. It's, it's so good. 
Any more questions? All right, we have a fine gentleman back here. Um, I would like to hear your personal opinion and relationship to generative AI and if it has any part in your workflow. うん。なんか、なんか最終的なものにはならない気がします。今のところ、もっとこれからどんどん進んでいくとちょっとわからないんだけど、あの、何を書かしてもちょっと見たことあるものになっていく感じがするんですね。なんだろう、本能的にちょっと拒否するものになるような気がする。だからね、まだ怪しいなと思ってますし、やっぱりそのものを作るっていうことと意外と相性が悪いんじゃないかなっていうふうにちょっと思ってます。でもまだわかんない
うん、大丈夫だったと思いますけどね<笑>あの、うん、あの結構ちゃんとプリビズを作ってプリビズっていうのは、えー、っと簡単な CG でこういうシーンになりますよっていうのを作るんですけどそれ見てもらったりとかあとあのえなんだ AR あの iPhone で見ると本当のゴジラがそこに見え風景に重なって見えるっていうソフトを作ったんですよでそれで見てカメラマンもあ大体このぐらいなのねとかキャ,クあのキャストの皆さんもこんぐらいなのねっていうのをちゃんとあの確認したりしながらやってたんでまあ,あので,きることだのできるだけのことはしました僕らも、まあ、あとはまあすごく勘のいい人たちなんであのちゃんと分かって。このくらいの恐怖感でやればちょうどゴジラにいいんだよなっていう恐怖感の調整をしてくれたんであの非常にキャストには恵まれたと思いますただ船の上で海に出た時はみんな酔っちゃって大変だったです<笑>あのえっ、ー、と敷島が起こるシーン船の上で起こるシーンがあるんですけどあの唇の色が変わってるんですねでみんながうわすごいあの神木君怒るシーンで唇の色まで変えてるよって<笑>ただ酔ってただけです<笑>吐,きそう吐きそうなもう直前だったそうですそれ我慢してたらあの色になっちゃったって言ってたあのそこはちょっと苦労させましたね。はい Uh, I think we did okay in the end, and the actors really understood what the vision was. And there were a lot of processes and tools in place. For example, there's a process called pre vising that we did where we make very simple CG renderings of what we imagine the final scene is going to be. So when the actors have access to that, it gives them a good idea of what scene they are acting. And as well, we made a tool for the iPhone that allows us to see in AR by holding up your iPhone what Godzilla and people would look like to scale in different scenes. So, this allowed us to really imagine what it was, what the performance is that we are going to need. So, I think also the cast had really, really good instincts. They knew about this amount of fear is exactly what's needed if Godzilla is about this far away. So, I, I say I'm, I've been really blessed with the, the cast.、Um, But if there is one thing I, I can say, a lot of the scenes where we filmed in, on the ocean on a ship, everyone got sick, cast and crew. So there's a scene where Shikishima gets really angry on the ship, and when he's just start, he's biting his lip and he's kind of shaking, his lip starts to turn purple. Like, oh man, this guy's a really good actor. He can change the color of his lip on cue. As it turns out, he was just really seasick. <laughs> Well, thank you so very much. Please, another、uh, round of big applause. Thank you. 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 Thank